I know we've said it before, but this one you really can look, but don't touch. Yeah. <laughs> I said don't touch. Right. Forgot. <laughs> X-Men, what a huge franchise. Huge franchise. Yeah, comic books, movies, books. Cartoon series. Yeah. Action figures. Woohoo! What a coincidence. Well, we like talking about those things. We do. Yeah. What's this one? Uh, this one <laughs> is Rogue from the X-Men Legends line. Yeah. Um, she came from the Juggernaut series. And she's not only a great toy, but it's a great piece of sculptural art as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is an action figure which actually looks really good. One of the great things for me is that this is the costume that she was wearing when I first got into the X-Men comics. Mm. Um, this is from the Jim Lee, Chris Claremont X-Men number one, which was the, which was and still is, I believe, the highest selling comic book of all time. This is her outfit from that time. It's very 90s, but it looks fantastic, and they really use that as the basis for the animated series, which a lot of people came to know and love the X-Men through. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a, a pretty iconic outfit for her. Rogue, can you see Bishop? I could spit on him if I wasn't a lady. So what kind of details does she have? Well, for starters, we've got this wonderful leather jacket on. Mm -hmm. um, it's a nice sort of bomber jacket, but it's really short as well. I don't I don't think it's a Bolero jacket or anything like that, but it's, it's really cool. You kind of get this sort of, I don't know, almost corporate synergy sort of thing out of it and that she's got this leather jacket, which has got the X... Yeah. Emblem on the side. It's yeah. like, well, clearly we had this whole, you know, shelf full of jackets with X emblems on them. Let's. She liked it, so it she yeah. put it on, yeah. The colours are really cool the green and yellow. What does that yeah. represent? Well, the green is often a colour which has been associated with Rogue. When she first appeared, her outfit was green. A lot of her costumes have had green as a you know, major, major um, component of them. Yeah. The yellow is much more the, you know, the X Men uniform sort of colour. Um, when the X Men first appeared, they're in a sort of yellow and blue slash black, yeah. um, and that was very much used as the X-Men uniform sort of thing. And we've seen kind of that same sort of idea come back in Deadpool with Megasonic Teenage Warhead's mm -hmm. outfit being basically an X-Men uniform. She wears gloves. She does. Now that's so she, uh, well, because when she touches people, right, she absorbs their powers. If they're a mutant or if they're a human, I imagine she harms them. Yeah. She has an interchangeable hand there as well. She does. Oh, can I touch it? Yeah, yeah. Ah! <laughs> no. So obviously that's uh, a hand. Yeah. Clips in there, right? And that's part of her character as well. Obviously, yeah. you know, she'll have her hand out occasionally and use her power to touch people and uh, drain exactly. their powers. Yeah. Both as an offensive weapon and as a constructive one as well. Mm. Um, so it's really nice that they've included just one little accessory, just a hand. And that opens up so many storytelling possibilities for you using this figure. <laughs> On like, your shelf, other characters cowering back. Exactly, Don't touch yeah. it, yeah. Ah! Out cold. As a Marvel Legends sort of figure, we would expect there to be a reasonable amount of articulation, and she doesn't really disappoint. Yeah. Um, so we do have the head on a ball joint. Um, now the problem is that this is restricted somewhat by the amount of hair that she's got. The usual that's, story. Long yeah, hair. Yeah. Long hair, hard plastic. It really sort of sticks around the, the collar and everything like that, so you do lose some of the articulation there. How else you would solve that other than giving it a softer plastic for the hair, and even then, it, it's kind of hard to overcome. Mm. Um, there's the the torso cut, uh, which allows you to move her around there. Which is right at the bottom of the jacket. She has movement at the hips there. Um, you do have a swivel at the top of the thigh there, as well as a double hinge at the knee, um, and some good rocket ankles um, at the boots. So, so very modern articulation scheme. Very much so. It's, it's very much the standard for female characters in the Marvel Legends line. What more could a gal want? She's a great character, and yes. a great toy, a great looking toy, that's really, really cool. Hmm. They've done a good job. They really have. It, it really shows how well Hasbro have got to grips with the Marvel Legends style. Yeah. Well, even taking it further in a way. Hmm. Yeah, making Definitely. it look as good as it can look. That's the rogue that I remember as well. Yeah. She's gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, this is the thing. You, you <laughs> For a toy, I mean. <laughs> the state, how significant it is to have a female action figure that actually looks pretty. Um, you know, when we come from Ape Face Princess Leia figures uh, yeah, through to right. this, yeah. this is a major improvement. I mean, she looks cool. She just looks like, she looks heroic, but she looks really yeah. hot. 
<laughs> yeah. Don't flatter yourself, Swamp Boy. So that's Rogue from the Juggernaut wave of the Marvel Legends series from Hasbro. Awesome figure. Really pleased with it. Thank you so much, Hasbro. More please. More please. <laughs> Absolutely. And if you guys love her, tell us down below. Don't forget to thumbs up our video and subscribe to the channel. We're out of here for now, right? Yeah, but we may reabsorb your powers later on and absorb your memories and life force as well, like I'm about to do to Scoot. Uh, Nothing's happening. <laughs>